In this tutorial, you will learn how to install the VirtualMain Open Source uh, Web Hosting Control Panel on a Linux Ubuntu 22.04 LTS server in minutes. I'm going to demonstrate this on a server, which is actually deployed in the cloud on the Amazon EC2 service. VirtualMain is a powerful and flexible web hosting control panel built for Linux and BSD-based systems. It is a solution that is available as an open source community-supported product and a more feature-filled version with premium support is also available. VirtualMain is the cost-effective and comprehensive solution to virtual web hosting management. Some of the features of VirtualMain include domain accounts, user and reseller accounts, access control lists, backups and cloud integration, as well as uh, database management and a lot more. So if you're looking for an open source product to manage your website or websites, then you can try out the VirtualMain as a solution for your use case. So the first step is to deploy the actual Linux Ubuntu 22.04 instance on the Amazon EC2 service. So sign into your Amazon Web Services account and on the dashboard search for the EC2 service. Click on EC2 and then proceed by clicking on the launch instance uh, button. This should then open up the new EC2 launch experience. On the name field, just type in the name of your instance. So in this case, I'm just going to call it uh, Virtual Min Web Server. So scroll down to the application and OS images section and choose the Ubuntu option. Scroll down to the instance type uh, section and choose the t2.medium instance type. We're just going to choose an instance that gives us about four gigs of memory as a minimum. Proceed by clicking on the create new key pair link and then on the key pair name field, Type in uh, virtual min uh, server key and then you need, then need to scroll down to the private key file format section. So you can either choose a .pem or a .ppk file format. So you just have to choose what works best for you. So in my case, I'm going to choose the .pem option. So it's, it will actually automatically download the key file and then you just need to also then allow HTTP and HTTPS traffic to your instance. So next, I'm going to allocate 50 gigs as the storage for the instance and then click on the create instance button so as you can see the instance has actually now been deployed so um, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the public IP address for the instance and we're actually going to create an area code that maps to this instance so open up the root 53 service and then click on hosted zones Click on any one hosted zone for your registered domain names and then click on the create record button. So we're going to actually set the record name for the instance here. Uh, so I'm just going to set the record name to virtual min uh, uh, web server and then on the value field I'm just going to paste in the public IP address for the instance and then click on the create records button. So you've successfully created an A record that is pointing to the uh, Amazon EC2 instance that we've actually just created. So you now need to return back to the EC2 dashboard and click on the instances uh, link. So this should then show all of the instances that are actually running in your dashboard. So just click on the instance ID and then click on where it says connect. So you just need to copy the connection URL and open up your terminal application. So change your working directory to the downloads directory and then run the command chmod400 which will mean uh, server key.pem and then you then need to paste in the connection URL that you uh, copied earlier. Just paste that into your terminal window and then you also need to make sure you change the root username from root to Ubuntu and then press end. So once you've actually uh, followed through these tips you should now be connected to your instance via SSH. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to run the command sudo su to change to root and then run the command apt update so that uh, we can quickly install some essential updates that we'll need for this installation. So next I'm going to set a custom host name for the instance. So just type in hostname ctl, set hostname, and then I'm going to just set that hostname to a uh, virtual main, uh, web server. So this this then matches up to the ADA code that we actually created earlier. So I'm then going to edit the host configuration file 
and in this file I'm just going to add an entry for another one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one and then I'm just going to point that to the host name that I've actually just set uh, just now so press Control O and then press Control X to exit out of that file and then we're also going to going to edit the cloud.cfg configuration file so just type in nano etc cloud and then cloud.cfg in this file I'm then going to set the preserve host name parameter to true so this then makes sure that the custom host name will actually persist across reboots so once you've made all of these uh, changes you just need to reboot the instance so that all of the changes we've actually made will take effect so next you then need to download the virtual main installation script onto the ubuntu server so i'm just going to reconnect to the server via ssh and then once i've successfully connected you then need to run the command sudo su to change to the root user account so i'm just going to clear my screen so that you can clearly see what I, what is actually happening so i'm going to paste in that uh, command that will actually download the script from the official download uh, page and then there's a second command that you need to run to set the script to become executable so just type in chmod a plus x and then type in install.sh so uh, you then need to uh, then type in or paste in that command which is sudo dot forward slash install dot sh which will then uh, kick start the virtual main uh, installation process so i'm just going to type in y to confirm and then press end so as you can see the virtual main installation process is now in progress so we're actually going to be installing version 7 of the virtual main product and the amount of time it takes for the installation to complete depends on the performance of your virtual main uh, uh, Linux Ubuntu server particularly the hardware resources that you've uh, allocated to the instance as well as the performance of your internet connection but in my case it took about a minute or so to complete so once the setup is complete I am then going to make a change to the uh, instance actually so I'm just going to make a security change here so you need to select the security group attached to your instance and then we then need to edit the inbound rules so just click on the edit inbound rules button and then click on the um, add rule button so we're going to add a rule to open up a uh, tcp port actually so we're going to be opening tcp port 10,000 and then click on the save rules button so this will then allow us to connect through to this instance on uh, TCP port uh, 10,000. So you then need to open a new browser window and type in the A record or the subdomain that you set up earlier and then append the port number 10,000 at the end of that uh, URL. So if you get a connection is not private error message, just click on advanced and then cl click on the proceed to the subdomain uh, link. You now need to type in a username or password. So I'm just going to be using the root user account on the Ubuntu server to actually log in. So I'm just going to return to the terminal and then type in the command passwd. Then you need to then type in a custom password for your root user account if you haven't done so already. So return back to the login page and then type in root and then type in your uh, uh, password that you've actually set and then click on sign in but I do recommend that you actually set up a custom user account that you actually use to log into the virtual main uh, dashboard so on the post installation wizard I am just going to click on next and then you should then get a prompt asking you the preload virtual main libraries question uh, so I'm just going to set that to yes and then run email domain lookup server yes again and then click on next so on the next prompt it's then asking to enable the virus scanning with clamav so i'm just going to select yes and click on next so um run spam assassin server filter select yes and then click on uh, next so you should now see another prompt asking you of the uh database uh, server that you'd like to use so i'm just going to choose the mariadb database server and then click on next set uh, mariadb password i'm just going to leave the default uh, generated password and then click on next 
So the post installation wizard is then going to ask for a DNS server to use. So I'm just going to check that from the hosted zone details. And then I'm just going to paste that into the primary name server field there. So click on next. Uh, let me just click on next. And um, you should now see another prompt uh, telling you that the post installation configuration process is now complete. So click on the return to virtual main uh, button and click on the recheck and uh, refresh configuration button. You should now see a prompt showing you of all of the checks that are actually happening in the background. So uh, this should take about a minute or so. Once the check process is complete, click on the return to virtual servers list. And from here, you can now start to use the virtual main product for your use case. So that's been it guys. That's a quick look at how you can set up virtual min. I hope this tutorial has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing.